the IATA AGM in Boston endorsed a resolution that commits the industry to achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2050, effectively aligning the industry with the aspirations of the Paris Agreement. So I, I think it was a critical development, very important step for the industry, and I was very pleased to see such strong support for the resolution. So back in 2009, uh, the airline industry through IATA committed to a reduction of 50% in net emissions by 2050. At the time, aligning ourselves with the Kyoto Protocol. But it's clear that things have developed since then and that that target is not enough. So we're now moving forward to reduce to net zero. In our previous commitment, it would have uh, meant achieving 325 million tonnes of CO2 net emissions. So effectively, we're now saying we've got to go from 325 million tonnes net emissions to zero net emissions. It's a big step and it's an important step. Not only do we have this commitment to net zero, but we've also given an indicative pathway to uh, achieving the net zero target. And I think that's very important as well. Uh, quite honestly, when, when we reached the 50% uh, net uh, agreement, we didn't really set out how we would get there. I, I think a commitment has very little credibility unless you can demonstrate how you're going to get there. So SAF is going to play a critical part in that. In the short term, we will be heavily dependent on offsetting. But what we want to see is wide-scale, significant availability of sustainable aviation fuels because we believe that this is the most credible and most efficient way of achieving our net zero target. The good news about SAF is that the technology is proven, uh, which is great. We, we have several credible pathways to the development of sustainable aviation fuels. We've got very significant feedstock available, so we're no longer concerned about whether we can develop enough SAF. We're concerned about the availability of the SAF. And I, I think if uh, fuel companies were looking for an indication from the industry about our willingness to buy the product, well, then they got a very strong uh, s sense of that from the annual general meeting. Airlines want to use sustainable fuels. The challenge we face today is that there is very little availability of the product. So we want to see a commitment now by fuel companies to start producing sustainable fuels at scale uh, it clearly will improve the cost performance. Uh, the cost today is prohibitive versus kerosene, uh, but we believe that's mainly because of the low volumes of sustainable fuel being produced. So this is very important for uh, our industry. If we're to have a viable future, we've got to be viable from a financial point of view, but more importantly, we've got to be viable and credible from an environmental point of view. I believe SAF is very credible in achieving this goal uh, because what we're doing is we're recycling the carbon. We're not adding new carbon into the atmosphere and clearly that's the objective that the, the world has now to try and reduce the amount of carbon being emitted. So, so this is a, a very sensible uh, alternative, if you like, for the airline industry until we can move to genuinely decarbonize our industry. And we believe that may be possible, but it's beyond the time frame that we're looking at. You've seen aircraft manufacturers like Airbus commit to a hydrogen powered aircraft by 2035. But realistically, we're not going to see those aircraft uh, available at scale in the period up to 2050. So between now and 2050, we've got to do everything we possibly can. And I believe SAF is the most credible alternative available to us in that time frame. I've had some very interesting conversations with fuel producers in recent weeks and months. Uh, they've demonstrated through their words that they are committed to developing SAF. We need to see that now in terms of action. Um, I've heard some nice words over the years. Uh, in fact, you know, the industry has been talking about sustainable fuels going back 10, 15 years. Uh, now we need to see wide-scale production of sustainable fuels, and it's in everybody's interest that that happens. So, you know, we're not just asking fuel companies to do this. We believe it's uh, absolutely critical that the fuel companies do it 
not just for the industry's sake, but for their own reputation. Because everybody's going to be looking now at the airline industry and at all of the suppliers to the airline industry to ensure that we're doing everything we can to address the environmental challenge that we face. Governments have a very important role. They've got to set the policy framework to drive us all in the right direction. Uh, get the policy framework wrong, you know, we'll be set back for years. So we believe the, the right way for governments to act now is to incentivize further research and development into sustainable fuels, to incentivize the production of sustainable fuels, to support the wide-scale production of the product. There's a lot that governments can do in the same ways they did to support biofuels for road transport, when in fact you could argue there were alternative forms of energy available. We don't have an alternative form of energy available to the airline industry, so therefore we would encourage governments to look at their policy frameworks to ensure that it is incentivizing the right behavior. This isn't the time for taxes. Taxes will merely take money out of the industry that otherwise would have gone into spending on sustainable fuels, uh, gone on new technology, and improving the uh, environmental performance of the industry. Fuel has always been the biggest part of an airline's cost base. You know, typically it averages about 25% of an airline's cost base. For some, it's much higher, over 50%. You know, the industry can adapt to a higher oil price or a higher fuel price. But what we need to see is clearly uh, everything being done to bring down the cost of sustainable fuels today. The gap between the price of kerosene and sustainable fuels is, is too big. Uh, and we recognize that that is largely down to the, the low scale, the, uh, you know, the inefficiencies in developing uh, the product uh, as it's being developed today. We're encouraged by the economic uh, conditions and forecasts that we see which suggest that the price of SAF can be brought down uh, with the increase in production a and the industry will adapt you know there will be a price to pay to get to net zero uh, that's the same for pretty much every industry and ultimately that price will be passed on to the consumer it may well have an impact on demand going forward but what we've all got to do to ensure that we have a viable industry is to try and do this in the most cost efficient way uh, so we believe SAF can be cost efficient and we believe it can be credible, but the critical issue is we need to start seeing wide-scale production to ensure that airlines can demonstrate by actions that they are now flying with a sustainable fuel on board their aircraft. Everybody needs to play their part, including airports. Uh, you know, the fuel has to be delivered to the airport in the most efficient way. Uh, we're looking at life cycle CO2. We want to make sure that we're using the existing infrastructure at airports where new infrastructure has to be developed. It should be developed at cost in the most cost efficient way. You know, this is not the time for people to try and profiteer on the back of this commitment. This is the time for everybody in the industry to demonstrate that we're doing what's right and we're doing it for the environment. You know, I will call out anybody who seeks to make a profit on the back of this commitment. Because now is not the time for game playing. Now is the time to demonstrate the industry's commitment to achieving this critical target of net zero by 2050. So today, as you know, we're limited to a 50% mix of uh, uh, sustainable fuel and kerosene. Uh, but already there's work going on for certification to 100% sustainable fuel. And I'm very confident. This is the great thing about sustainable fuel. As a drop-in fuel, we can use the existing technology, aircraft, engines, fuel supply at the airport. So it is a low-cost uh, infrastructure and technology pathway for us. Uh, we've just got to address the cost of developing the sustainable fuel. Uh, but going forward, we would expect to see aircraft uh, certified to 100% uh, sustainable fuel, certainly by 2030. Uh, and that will be an important development um, as we see the production of sustainable fuels ramping up beyond that period. So the airline industry has demonstrated that it is committed to achieving net zero. The airline industry wants to use sustainable fuels. In fact, many airlines are using sustainable fuels today, but struggle to get the, the volume of supply. 
uh, and in fact in many cases with the demonstration flights that we've been operating we haven't been able to get 50 percent sustainable fuel uh, and th that's a shame uh, because I, I think that is undermining the credibility of the argument that the industry has a path to achieving net zero so airlines clearly need to prepare for uh, the cost differential that will apply, and we accept that there will be some cost differential. Uh, but the airline industry has always been adaptable and has been able to adjust uh, its costs to the uh, changing costs of uh, supply, particularly with, with fuel costs. So I'm not really concerned about that. I think that's something that ultimately uh, will be priced into ticket prices, and uh, we will ad you know, address that challenge. Uh, but what we're really calling for now is for fuel companies to start giving us the product. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll put it into the aircraft. We're ready, we're willing, and we're able to use it. We just want the supply. Sustainability is an existential issue. You know, if, if we hadn't committed to net zero in 2050 at our AGM in Boston, I, I think we would have been under incredible pressure now given uh, the COP26 in Glasgow and the ICAO assembly next year. But the fact that we have made this commitment means we, we can now engage with governments, with regulators, with authorities. Uh, you, we've made the commitment, we've demonstrated that it can be done, uh, and we can help to influence the right policy frameworks to ensure that this can be done in a sensible way. So I, I'm excited uh, uh, about the future. Uh, I think this has been a very important step. But it's absolutely critical that we translate that commitment to net zero into actions to achieve net zero.